Okay, so welcome to this uh, next video on Ephrin A, axon growth cones and retinal ganglion cells. So, so far what we've seen is, if this is a retinal ganglion cell here, with its growing axon here, and its axon growth cone here, then basically you have huge oscillations in the level of calcium in this axon growth cone. So if I plot calcium level versus time, um, it, it, uh, and calcium level intracellularly, what I see is things like this. Very low calcium, very high calcium. Very low calcium, very high calcium. Very low calcium, very high calcium. And we've seen how these oscillations are going to be in phase with when you have an action potential uh, arriving in the axon growth cone. So this will be caused by an action potential arriving there. And we've seen how it comes about, basically. The action potential produces a tiny little calcium pulse um, through uh, voltage-gated calcium channels. And we've then seen how that pulse is amplified through oscillations in cyclic AMP, which activate oscillations in activity of protein kinase A, which then activates either the reanidine receptor or the IP3 receptor to cause oscillatory release of calcium from the ER. Okay, so you get oscillations in calcium level in the axon growth cone like so. Right, okay, so now, if ephrin A is in... Um, is in the uh, vicinity of this axon growth cone. So here is e e ephrin A, okay? So it's a great big molecule as far as we're concerned. So here is ephrin A. Then basically what this axon growth cone will have is if I draw it bigger here, this is the axon growth cone, it will have ephrin A receptors, okay? So here's our ephrin A receptor. So this is our ephrin A receptor. And ephrin A is often abbreviated to FA receptor. So if you see that, it means ephrin A receptor. Okay, so ephrin A is going to come in, bind to this ephrin A receptor. And if it binds to the ephrin A receptor and you have these huge pulses in calcium, then what you get is retraction of the growth cone. And I'm sorry, this is probably really disappointing now. You, you've struggled through all that stuff on cal on. Um, action potentials and uh, calcium, um, uh, the amplification of the calcium oscillations. And now you're left with this just, and this causes retraction of the growth cone because little more is known than that. I certainly don't know anything more than that. I don't think it is actually known how it causes retraction of the growth cone. But what is observed is that you have to have not only activation of the ephrine A receptors, but you have to have these oscillations in calcium level. And I will give you experimental evidence to show you that. Basically, there's absolutely loads of experimental evidence. You can knock out every stage of the process that we've been through that generates these large calcium oscillations. And if you do that, then um, if you stimulate this axon growth cone with ephrin A, it does not produce retraction. It's only if you've got these large oscillations of calcium and you have stimulation of the ephrin A receptor, then it produces the retraction of the growth cone, i.e. the growth cone is going to move right out of that place where the ephrin A was. Right, so what experiments can you do? Well, you can give tetrodotoxin. Now, what does tetrodotoxin do? It blocks sodium channels. So here is tetrodotoxin. Tetrodotoxin is going to block this voltage-gated sodium channel, and it will block action potentials, basically. It stops action potentials. And if you stop the action potentials, then you stop the whole driving force for these oscillations in calcium. You stop the activation of the voltage-gated calcium channels. You stop this small oscillation in calcium. If you stop this small oscillation in calcium, you stop the activation of adenylyl cyclase 1. If you stop that, you stop the um, oscillation in the level of cyclic AMP. If you stop the oscillation in the level of cyclic AMP, you don't get protein kinase A activity, and you don't get um, protein kinase A activating either the reanidine receptor or the IP3 receptor to activate calcium release from intracellular stores. So you don't get this large calcium oscillation. So, tetrodotoxin, if you give tetrodotoxin, stimulate the neuron with ephrine A, you do not get retraction. 
Okay, next step. Um, what about if you remove extracellular calcium? So, remove this 1.5 millimolar calcium. Put your, afro, uh, put your uh, retinal ganglion cell in a medium containing no extracellular calcium. So if you remove this extracellular calcium, then what's going to happen? The calcium isn't going to be able to come through uh, the voltage-gated calcium channel. So no extracellular calcium. If you remove the extracellular calcium, as I say, uh, no calcium will come through this voltage-gated calcium channel. So you won't get these oscillations in calcium here. If you don't get those oscillations in calcium, you're not going to activate your adenylalcyclase 1 enzyme. So if you don't activate that, you don't get these oscillations in cyclic AMP. If you don't activate the oscillations in cyclic AMP, you don't get these large oscillations in calcium, which are driven by protein kinase A, activating uh, endoplasmic reticulum release of calcium. Okay, next place where you can knock out. You can knock out adenylalcyclase 1. So you can make a knockout mouse. So uh, knock out this gene. If you knock out the gene, again, you do not get um, you do not get retraction of the axons um, when you stimulate with efferin A, the axon growth cone when you stimulate with efferin A. Okay, so why is that? Well, you've got the action potential. You've got the, you'll get these small oscillations in calcium uh, because uh, this step is still functional. Basically, this process is still functional. Action potentials are still happening. Um, you're still activating the voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium is still coming through, so you'll still get those small oscillations in calcium. But what was the purpose of all of this? It was to amplify them up. Those are pathetic little rises in calcium. You need these large, huge rises in calcium. And if you don't have the adenylalcyclase at one enzyme, then you're not going to get the oscillations in cyclic AMP, and therefore you're not going to get these oscillatory release of calcium from the intracellular stores. So uh, knocking out adenylalcyclase 1 also produces, um, produces um, a loss of this function. Right, okay, so um, that's pretty much all I've got to say on um, efferin A, axon growth cones, and um, retinal ganglion cells. So this calcium and cyclic AMP oscillations are extremely important in, um, in producing this retracting of the axon growth cone in response to efferin A.